Okay, so good afternoon. Uh, I'm Greg Bartlett, the uh, Senior VP for CMOS Business Unit at Global Foundries. The most obvious question is, well, why would a foundry be at a, a RISC V uh, Foundation seminar? And that's actually the very nature of what I want to address uh, with you uh, today. I also note that I am the last speaker before lunch break, so I'll uh, be expeditious in my, uh, in my talk. So we have, first of all, we're the only foundry that is part of the uh, RISC V Foundation. You might say, well, why would a foundry join that? Part of it is we look at the value proposition of Risk v for what its role as a processor or architecture is in the, uh, uh, in the SOC space and realize it's very well aligned with the approach that Global Foundries has. We have a uh, unique CEO who uh, was COO at Qualcomm and uh, ran Motorola Mobility and pays attention to important trends in the industry, pays attention to differentiation on there. And that's what we exist for as well as a foundry. We're not trying to be another Me Too foundry. So we saw the opportunity to join this, be the one foundry that was part of it and start thinking at the system level in how we develop and bring technology to the marketplace to enable your products. And for the last year, we have been uh, engaged in looking at applications where RISC-V architecture is showing up. And we've got some representations here, starting with the upper left, where you see an implementation of a couple 32-bit RISC-V cores and a, uh, a DSP for vision processing. This would go into putting a deep learning AI processor in place that would be used for you know, robotics and IoT and uh, IP camera type uh, applications. In the lower left, you see an example of, in the automotive space, of multi-core RISC-V that would be a also hooked up with a custom neural engine to address automotive or IoT type uh, applications. In both instances, the RISC-V uh, core and the instruction set are there to provide that flexibility and choice uh, from an implementation by customizing it, as you've been hearing all the speakers talk about this morning. In the case of the upper right-hand side, this is work from the University of Zurich that is uh, partnering with us, we'll talk about it in a minute, uh, for implementation for a very memory-intensive uh, cluster compute uh, implementation, and uh, they're implementing 32-bit to start with now and will extend to 64-bit. Uh, and then the last area is in the lower right where you see a coprocessor implementation. Uh, that is an instance where you could partner with an x86-based architecture, GPU architecture, and use the RISC-V architecture to offload a lot of the system uh, and control applications. Bottom line is we see broad applicability across a lot of unique uh, architectural implementations on there. And as we have been looking at each of these, we have a lot of customers already engaged with us bringing these products to uh, the marketplace. So what is the value proposition for a foundry being part of this? It's really looking at the role of silicon technology in enabling further differentiation on top of the RISC-V uh, core. So this is, quite frankly, as we look at the market applications that our customers are talking to us about versus the technology offering of our 22 fully depleted SOI or 22 FDX, it comes down to the market alignment between them. This was a technology designed and developed for IoT, automotive, RF connected uh, devices, and we see really good synergy between a lot of the RISC-V architecture and products entering the marketplace and the silicon technology that we have developed. It is a differentiated solution. It offers FinFET level of uh, performance at a cost and complexity uh, of 28 uh, nanometers. So if for markets that are small and emerging, it's an ideal technology with low NRE uh, to get into the marketplace. It's also differentiated in a couple other aspects. It's a very low energy uh, technology. Operating voltages from 0.8 all the way down to 0.4 volts. Uh, picoamp per micron leakage, picoamp per cell uh, leakage in uh, memories. And importantly, from a flexibility standpoint, much like uh, the extension uh, on RISC-V instruction set, by using software control for body bias, you can regulate the performance and power consumption of these products in the marketplace. And we're in the midst of implementing a number of cores that will in fact bring to bear exactly how software control uh, can happen. So as we look at the markets that we're serving and the engagement we have with RISC-V based products, it does span core areas that are uh, meat and potatoes to a foundry like uh, Global Foundries. It's in the mobility space where we've got application processor capability there and a lot of other devices uh, spread throughout those phones. The real sweet spot, and I've mentioned already this was a technology designed and developed in the IoT uh, uh, space, uh, is in the RF and connectivity, very low leakage, uh, uh, software controlled body bias to have performance when and where you want it with a cost structure well below where uh, FinFET sits. 
RF, this is an intrinsically high RF performing. So these devices that want to be mobile, where you need to have some communication protocol, whether it's support for 5G or transceivers, this is a technology with a 350 gig FT uh, in the technology that makes for very, very high performance and uh, good area savings. And quite frankly, as we look at the emergence of machine learning and artificial intelligence and connectivity and onboard compute and connected intelligence at the edge. There's no better example of that than automotive and we have uh, initial engagements in, uh, in this space. This is an ideal technology because it does allow, take the best example is a long range millimeter wave radar where you wanna have a controller device, you wanna be able to put the radio front end integrated, you can even integrate the PA into uh, the device because it's an SOI substrate that allows device stacking with very, very good uh, RF uh, performance. So this is a, a technology that is well suited for the market applications. So how do we en enable the RISC-V uh, processor solutions with this technology? It starts with the core capabilities of it. I've mentioned already 0.4 to 0.8 uh, volt. We have a customer that already has functioning logic uh, at 0.4 volts with a very large uh, die. So we've demonstrated an ultra low power uh, envelope on there. As I've mentioned, it does feature uh, body bias capabilities, so you can have whatever level of performance up to the intrinsic capabilities of FinFET technology, but still have you know, gigahertz level of performance in an envelope of one watt of power, and that really opens up some exciting aspects of it. But we know it's not just about transistors. This comes down to how you enable the technology. And we know that in delivering a differentiated uh, technology to the market is like delivering RISC-V. It takes a community of people committed to driving something in the industry. We put the FD Accelerator uh, program in place that has a lot of partners uh, and a lot of implementation of RISC-V. And you'll see in a minute a couple press releases that we've, uh, we've made today where we're uh, supporting partners uh, bringing their RISC-V architectures into these technologies. It also comes down to enabling the business model. So whether it's soft or hard IP and pre-silicon validated off the shelf RIX-5 implementations, we're in a position to bring those to uh, the marketplace. And let's talk about a couple of those. So we did two uh, press releases today, one with Sci-5 and one with uh, Reduced Energy Microsystems. The Sci-5 platform will follow on uh, what you just saw, which is the next generation of both 32 and 64-bit uh, architectures on the 22 FDX, uh, and as well as porting the IP over onto it. That is really focused in data center, machine learning, and the automotive uh, space. In the uh, case of REM, this is a RISC-V IP architecture also, but in this case, it's really focused more in the vision systems, uh, drones, uh, robotics, et cetera. On top of that, uh, we're cooperating with Andes, uh, who uh, spoke uh, a couple uh, minutes ago uh, with the implementation of their 32-bit uh, architecture onto the 22FDX platform. And then finally, because we know a lot of the innovation does come out of universities, actively engaged with universities bringing uh, uh, silicon technology to bear in their implementation of RISC-V. That starts with uh, University in Zurich and uh, Bologna, and we're in the early stages with other critical universities like IIT Chennai and uh, Berkeley. So for us, this really does come down to how we enable you as people wanting to bring a product to the marketplace uh, to bear. And that is not just the technology, it's also the business model. So the announcement with Sci-5 that we made uh, this morning uh, is in fact targeted at the data center, as I already mentioned, a next generation implementation beyond the 28 nanometer uh, capabilities. And it's a unique business model that will do two things, enable you to bring your products to the marketplace uh, sooner. It's support for both the E31 and E51 uh, cores, uh, as well as uh, all of the necessary IP surrounding whatever those products uh, might be. The key to it is enabling you to get into the market without any upfront cost. The uh, cash changes hands only when you bring your product to the marketplace. Our two companies are working together to bring this uh, to the marketplace and enable you uh, uh, in a very low NRE phase to be able to bring a product to the marketplace. Low risk, debugged cores on this technology ahead of time, people that know how to do the designs already, an IP ecosystem that surrounds that technology offering, and again, bringing a very low NRE solution to the marketplace. Thank you very much for your time.